Rindler coordinates. Remember Bob and Alice from our previous video entitled Constant Acceleration? Alice stayed at home while Bob rocketed off, accelerating at a constant rate relative to his rest frame. We arrived at the following three results. Now let's imagine an event happens a distance x prime from Bob at the exact moment Bob reaches his present location. We will use x and t to denote the event's coordinates according to Alice, and x prime and t prime to denote the event's coordinates according to Bob. We will now find the relationship between Alice's and Bob's event coordinates. Let's draw a dotted red line from the event to Alice's time axis to help us visualize the coordinates according to Alice, and a dotted blue line from the event to Bob's time axis to help us visualize the coordinates according to Bob. Remember from a previous video that Bob's x prime axis is not horizontal in Alice's rest frame, but rather has slope v. This is why we draw a line of slope v to represent Bob's x prime axis. I constructed this slope by first finding the tangent line at Bob's location, whose slope is 1 over v, and reflecting it in the t equals x axis. We know the length of this smaller dotted red line is given by Bob's x position, which we can find out by using his x position equation. But this time we will rewrite the time coordinate to be t prime instead of tau in the equation. t prime and tau are equal in the diagram, since the dotted blue line is a line of simultaneity for Bob. But it is customary to use t prime instead of tau when referring to events that are not taking place at Bob's location in spacetime. The rest of the distance to the event, according to Alice, can be represented by drawing two vertical dotted red lines from the ends of the blue line to Alice's x-axis. We know the distance between these lines along Alice's x-axis because we scaled the x and x prime axes relative to each other in a previous video. So if the blue dotted line has length x prime, then the corresponding distance along Alice's x-axis is x prime over the square root of 1 minus v squared. So the x-position of the event, according to Alice, is Bob's x-position plus the length between the red vertical dotted lines, which is x prime over the square root of 1 minus v squared. But Bob's velocity is equal to hyperbolic tan a naught tau, or using Bob's coordinate time t prime, Bob's velocity is hyperbolic tan a naught t prime, because t prime and tau are equivalent. So we can rewrite the denominator as the square root of 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared a naught t prime. Now 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared a naught t prime is hyperbolic secant squared a naught t prime. So the equation now becomes x equals x bob plus x prime hyperbolic cosine a naught t prime. Substituting in the equation for x bob, gives us the result x equals 1 over a naught hyperbolic cosine a naught t prime minus 1 over a naught plus x prime hyperbolic cosine a naught t prime. Collecting like terms, we arrive at an expression for Alice's x coordinate as a function of Bob's x prime and t prime coordinates. The result is x equals x prime plus 1 over a naught hyperbolic cosine a naught t prime minus 1 over a naught. We can find Alice's time coordinate as a function of Bob's coordinates in a similar fashion. Let's start with Bob's location in time on the diagram according to Alice, and call it t Bob. This location is given by the time equation. As before, we rewrite the time coordinate to be t prime instead of tau in the equation, because it is customary to use t prime instead of tau when referring to events that are not taking place at Bob's location in spacetime. To find the remainder of the time t up to the event, we extend a horizontal dotted line from Bob's position to the event's location in space. This forms a yellow rise-run triangle whose slope is the velocity v. The run has already been calculated to be x prime over the square root of 1 minus v squared, so we can solve the slope equation for the rise, which turns out to be x prime v divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared. When we substitute hyperbolic tan a naught t prime for the velocity, and using the fact that 1 minus hyperbolic tan squared equals hyperbolic secant squared, the rise simplifies to x prime hyperbolic sine a naught t prime. Then the total time t is equal to t bob plus the rise. Substituting these quantities in yields t equals 1 over a naught hyperbolic sine a naught t prime plus x prime hyperbolic sine a naught t prime. 
Collecting like terms gives us the final result t equals x prime plus 1 over a naught hyperbolic sine a naught t prime. x prime and t prime in these two equations are called Rindler coordinates. They are Bob's rest frame coordinates. These two equations describe the relationship between the rest frame coordinates of an observer undergoing constant rest frame acceleration and an inertial observer. These Rindler equations hold true as long as Bob began his journey at rest with Alice at the origin. However, imagine another person, Egbert, who is at rest with respect to Alice but some distance away. If he views Alice and Bob's origin to be at the location x0, t0, then he must add these numbers to the Rindler equations, of course, in order for the equations to describe the relationship between him and Bob, because he and Alice will agree on Bob's coordinates apart from these constants. Another detail that will be important in the future is that these equations, of course, hold regardless of the sign of the acceleration. Simply replace a0 with negative a0 everywhere, and the equations are valid still when Bob is undergoing negative acceleration, meaning acceleration back towards Alice. In our next video, we will use these coordinates to analyze the twin paradox from Bob's point of view. Thank you for watching.